Hello, everybody. This is Toth Station. A lot of inhabitants having a tech talk. Um, there, there's a few topics uh, prepared in our document. Um, please have a look. Um, I can't see who put the first one in there. Metrics cannot be read. I think that is an issue um, that we have on the list. Yeah, and it was me. It was who? Francesco. Okay. Yes, I was just wanted to check because it seems quite weird, and uh, it's an easy thing that we can do all together in, in a moment. Yes. Um, before we go into details, it looks like a few of the people don't really have good edit permissions on documents. Is that correct? If you're looking at the show notes, you're in suggestion mode. Is that what you intended to do? It's or resolved. He's just not in the uh, work account. Ah, OK. It's uh, OK. Then I'm just going to click uh, approve on everything. Cool. So, Francesco, what do we want to do with the metrics? We need to have a look at the issue you said. Yes, basically, there is a link. You can just click that link and see if you can see the metrics. If you can all see the metrics, then I have a problem. Otherwise, <laughs> there is another problem. Um, let me find that one. Ah, this one. So this is the uh, issue you talked about in Metri. The link you're talking about is just the Thanos link? It's actually this one. I, OK. It's the second one. Uh, I shall add it to the issue. This one? Yes. Yes. All right. So log in via OpenShift, which means operate first OpenShift. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I'd say I can't see it. Then there is some some other. Hey, can you can you click on that execute button? Yeah, I think it was um, executed as I dropped in. Nothing. I don't know how is. Can, can you can we hide metrics from users? I don't know. Okay. Interesting. So, so as of now, there is no metric. Like, so in last twelve hours. Uh, okay. Where is the timing? So, uh, you see that evaluation time, Christoph? There, uh, the yes. the drop down. No. Yeah. No. Uh, you see that about the empty query result, there is something called evaluation time written in the box. Mm -hmm. If you click on it, it will set date time, right? And yeah, now can you execute and see? It is being executed if I change it, right? Oh, I see. So for me, it shows continuously, like if I keep going to the previous ones. So I okay. need to see what permissions this are. Yeah, I think there's nothing in there. The load time of the data changes whenever I click on the left arrow. So I think it's executed automatically. And I think I don't see any data. Check on 17th. You are changing just the time. So check on 16th. And maybe okay. if yeah. you switch to graph and, and, and make a, a wider view, you, you can see this. So instead of one hour, pick, you know, uh, I see, I, I didn't see data until I, I switched it to two days and then I saw like small snippets. Nope. Strange. I am seeing I, some data there for uh, I think two days timeline. Yeah. Oh come on. What is it that we are looking for? Message. Damn it. Message count by version total. Underscores between the spaces. By version total, right? Oh. Yeah. Nope. Okay. So uh, just that leaves Frido. Do you see anything? 
it's because there's only six people in DevSecOps team and three people see something, three dozen. Okay, so I'll check on that. Uh, like 50 50 ratio. So, okay. Good. So, Hashad gonna take that one. Anything else, Francesco? That's the test that you needed? Yes, that's all. I mean, it was just to help us, Rashad. Okay. Good, next one. Uh, Toss Yaml versus owners. You, yeah, <laughs> I think we have had that before. Uh, is that right? Um, Pep, was it you or who added that one? I, I added the issue. It. You added, okay. Hey, it's just the discussion we started the other day. Um, users get confused uh, about what to do, mm -hmm. especially if they just want to build the images, they still need to get familiar with both stuff and be aware that there is some uh, overwriting if you're using one of the others right so mm -hmm. it's just to find the uh, just to have a better documentation or is uh, something that we need to do or so um i i can't remember his name uh Nathan. yes um is it that uh, he's looking for one specific user story, right? He, he just wants to build the images out of the tech release or what is he do, going to do? Yes, he wants to basically do releases and build images. Yeah. I mean, it's um, the same thing for us, right? You need to exactly. make a release if you want an image. Exactly. Um, shall, shall we start by taking that user story? Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's basically tech release, right? Yeah. Shall we start by taking that user story and writing up a documentation like uh, like what to do from scratch to have a tech release bot automation? That is what is yeah. required, right? Yes, but um, yes, actually, yeah, it makes sense. But usually, they basically use the templates that uh, we provided or the one. Yeah. That we, uh, uh, Correct, but um, I think you need to have certain um, GitHub applications installed and you need to have yes. certain yes. Uh, configuration files. So what I mean by that, um, if we take that user story, I want to add automation to my tech release process. Uh, we should start by saying, hey, you need to add the GitHub application, blah, 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 and you need to, and, and to make that work, you need to have the uh, TOS YAML file and if you need to have um, auto merging, which is not part of that user story actually, yeah. um, it is a different user story um, and stuff like that. I think we have all the bits and pieces in place anyways, right? So it's more like it is remixing. actually It is actually described. What, when they got confused was uh, with the rest of the things that are in the top YAML file. Yeah. Like, why do I have also the other stuff, which is not described in, in that section because it was not meant to be described in that section. I mean, you don't care in that case unless you do deals with advice, but if you don't do yes. that. Good. Well, uh, yes, actually, yes, that's enough. It's, it's only word for the deals with advice. I have a related question. Uh, I've noticed that the pro isn't picking approvers for reviewing PR. And for example, MI has only two reviewers and like six approvers. And all, all, all the time, only these two reviewers are picked. So is that uh, intended? Yes. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, so whoever is uh, uh, listed on the reviewer side, uh, they would 
be preferred as a reviewer because that's what the maintainers has decided that these people are the reviewers. Approvers just means that they have privileges to merge it. It doesn't mean they can they it doesn't mean they have the expertise on it, right? Like they don't have to review review it. Uh, it's, that's 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 how it is. If you think everyone who is in the approval should should review it, then remove reviewers, put the empty list, and everyone in the approval would like two people will pick get uh, picked from the approval because so basically that's the that's the way pro has been decided. So because yeah. I was going to say, like, that, that is on the owner's file, right? Yeah. But for example, Jupyter Lab requirements, uh, I put Gage as a reviewer. So I expect Gage to be picked. But every time it's just uh, the, the I think it's Christoph, Ashard, and Frido, which are the admin of the repo. But in the owners, they are not listed as reviewers. So I they, they are added by default, like, but uh, Gage is not added, for example. So uh, there is two different things. Um, uh, Christoph, can I share the screen? Oh yes, so, you can just take so, it. Yeah. So there is a, there is something called code owners file, which previously like dot station used to use, uh, like from twenty eighteen, right? So so people who were in twenty eighteen, all of us are listed here. This you can find it in dot GitHub. So to get up flash code owners. So all these folks are from 2018, right? So that's why most of the repository has this code owner. So all these folks will be added as a reviewer in it. If you remove this code owners file, uh, it, it, like that, that should do the trick. And now anyway, we are following the owners file. So that's the thing uh, we, we can uh, check on okay. this. Uh, and because there is already Two people or three people added, so then then thinks there is already reviewers added. Why to add more? So they, that's why they don't consider this. Coming to Dominic's question, as you see here, there is only two people added here, right? These are the only two people who will get uh, PR reviewers. Like to get these folks, you have to either copy them here or remove the reviewers completely. Oh, uh, that's yeah. I because I thought it's shares, but yeah, yeah, I get it now. And Pep actually talked about this in few uh, tech talks before. Like you can check it. Uh, what we dis like, I guess there was no consent. I don't know if there was consensus or not, but we decided that we'll add all of us at least uh, who are working, uh, so that everyone gets at least chance to review. If they don't want to, they can still switch to other reviewers. But they can do a yeah, that can explain. Yeah, no, uh, about so those are two different things. Like um, when to add ourselves, I think it was discussed and decided. You know, uh, it's maybe not a good idea that everyone be becomes an approver everywhere because it, it it's well ha being an approver is a responsibility, but that's kind of separate from from. The discussion of uh, total YAML versus owners versus code owners and um, for sure. And to summarize, yeah, um, back to the you know the original item in today's agenda, the the, the discussion of tot, total YAML versus owners and how confusing it can be. Well, it's we had this discussion as well, and my view of it was, OK, um, owners is available to us because we have prow, but people in general might not have prow. And um, with Todd.yaml, you can have man provide maintainers for for if, if you don't have them elsewhere. In our case, because we don't have, we don't, we have them in owners, it doesn't make much sense to duplicate and potentially introduce inconsistencies between Todd YAML and owners, right? But it might not be the case, like in, in the in general, for um like this this person Nathan was running through the tutorial and they might not have Prow or want to use Prow on, on their repo. And therefore it made make sense to to have 
but in, well, in configuration in total YAML. Sorry. sorry, in general is Kebeshet takes dot YAML file and does not oh. consider owner's file. Right, in but AI it, but, AI. but wait, uh, Kebeshet does have code that when looks when it looks for when it checks for maintainers and who can who has permissions to open a an issue like deliver uh, or update Quebec head update and when Quebec head checks who can do this it first checks for an owner's file ah. and you can override it in 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 the general maintainer section but and this might be what needs more documentation right yeah exactly but so when you say override like if there are any it will consider the .yaml file if there are no or this should be documented let me check uh um it's, it's a matter of uh, precedence so uh we, we should document uh what is checked when it's a priority of these files and is I think that there was checked this for every manager because pep just mentioned the update is it for every manager i think it's uh update manager it's just an update manager. Uh, I think we discussed this. Uh, Kevin worked on the implementation, but it's mm -hmm. not uh, stated. The, the reason behind it was reduce number of files and be consistent with uh, permissions, basically. And uh, I don't think we, we documented it, but it was uh, discussed on one of the tech talks. So it's a matter of, of documentation to, to be clear of these yeah. things. And as That's... Hashar said, uh, I think there are some defaults in uh, .dodiamo, uh, and this could introduce issues. Yeah, let's exercise it by uh, really documenting the use case, right? Um, we want to do a tech release. What, what now? Um, if we are talking now about the update owner of Kebeshet, uh, sorry, the update manager of Kebeshet, I think that's not really involved in the tech release process, right? But it's more like AI, CUECI, and that's that's basically it. So let's let's uh, start with that uh, use case and uh, document it a little bit better. Um, maybe we're gonna find the Kebeshet update here. There is some minimal documentation in, in, in that link. It's in the version manager and I pasted the link and I'll put it in the notes. But yeah, it, it should probably be documented better because it doesn't it's not clear the precedence and yeah, anyway. Mm. Uh, searching through the document is not Really yielding any good results. Okay. Maybe just a side question uh, to owner's file again. Is it also appropriate to mention Zix in like reviewers? Um. Y yes. If the if if uh, well, it's an alias, right? Um. If it is uh, if it is available, uh, why not? I think that should work. Uh, if you read through the documentation of the owners file of the Kubernetes owners file, um, you can also do some some pattern matching on on file names and assign different people to different files. Uh, for example, um, it might get complicated. Uh, actually, um, I think the the baseline is um, every approver should be the one who takes responsibility for that code to be merged into the code base. And every approver should be knowledgeable enough to figure out, ah, this code is good. If you want to make the approvers uh, a SIG, I think you can go ahead. Uh, please have a closer look at how the owner's files are parsed because I think it's just going in the repository up. So it's always adding from the current file to the root of the repository, not cross repository, I think.
Good. Anything else we need to do about that? Um, or do we feel like <clears throat> starting with the use case and a better documentation for the use case is a good action? Good. Then what's the next one? Gauge. Toss knowledge base versus PyPI. Yeah, so this is um, in reference to a conversation I had with Christoph the other day, where in Jupyter Lab requirements, you can manage dependencies. And from there, you can add packages. And from those packages, you can add versions and constraints. And then from there, you can pick a resolver, either PyPy or Thoth, and then resolve it. And then it'll give you a locked up file. Um, the issue here is uh, recently we introduced a feature for autocomplete or or specifically uh, drop down for the versions for the package. Now, when the, the issue arises when where we get that version data from or in also summary data when we have the drop down for the packages. And initially right now I'm just getting it through Thoth uh, knowledge graph, which means um, a lot of the not a lot, but like some of the files, some of the Python packages that are available on PyPy might not be available on Thoth. So it will show that, oh, this package might not exist or, oh, there's no versions for this package, which cuts down on the user experience. And when they go to choose a resolver, the issue is choosing the resolver is a second step, whereas adding the packages is the first step. So I guess I was getting, I wanted to get everybody's opinion on should we be using PyPy data? Because we know that might be um, a larger, I guess, subset of packages, whereas Thoth is a subset of those PyPy packages. And because the issue is once, if you, if you are, if you only pick packages that Thoth has, and then you go down and say, okay, I want to use PyPy, you might not, those packages, you might be under the interpretation that those packages don't exist. So do you do we default to using PyPy data or do we default to using Thoth data and then just deal with them not having the autocomplete features? Does that make sense? It might have been a little mixed up. Mm, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, at least your question makes sense to me. Um, uh, can't we? go ahead and um, ask both. I mean, um, if it is really the auto completion process uh, that you're talking about. Right, it's, it's basically just saying, should I be getting the versions, the list of versions through Thoth or should I get the list of versions through PyPy's endpoints? Sounds so tricky. if, if uh, Jupyter requirements should be used in uh, product, it might be good to keep just thought uh, as a source of all information. Even uh, the fallback to PPENV could be uh, like considered to be, you know, not enabled for, for customers because PPENV is not uh, supported uh, by Red Hat. And, uh, you know, keeping just thought as a source of data can simplify uh, questions that can later arise uh, by customers. Like they see that uh, package foo is in version, uh, auto-completed in version two, but uh, Todd uh, has no notion about this package. It can be because, uh, for example, I don't know, it's uh, maybe too fresh, like it was released uh, just 15 seconds ago and we haven't ingested data, or uh, it can be that, uh, we don't want to recommend uh, some packages because they are, I don't know, backed, uh, are, they are not backed by good community or things like that. So it might be a good idea to to keep, you know, the extension solely thought specific. Okay. So, I mean, current currently we have the option, or the user has the option of picking two resolvers, either PyPy or PIPM or, or Thoth resolver. So are you saying in the future that option to resolve through 
um, pipenv won't be available and it'll only be resolving through Thoth? Could be, like uh, because pipenv is uh, known to be hard to maintain, and uh, platform people do not want to maintain pipenv. Uh, that's why uh, there's micro pipenv and. Uh, you know, and offering uh, JupyterLab requirements with pipenv might be tricky because that might require one more person to uh, handle pipenv and pipenv issues. What would be the, um, yeah, uh, so A, it's, it's a fair statement to basically say um, the requirements extension is uh, tightly coupled to Toth uh, services. Therefore, we're going to use Toth as a resolver and uh, source of information only, Toth as a resolver and source of information. Um, but that uh, basically cuts off all the people that want to use uh, pipenv as a resolver, which is kind of okay. It's a decision for us. Um, if we have the extension installed in um, JupyterLab, what what we're going to do if uh, Toth uh, service is not available? We just fall back to nothing. In a production environment, yes. Uh, if uh, Toth does not resolve application dependencies, that's an issue that we can uh, support. You know like uh, better to invest time and resources to uh, uh, maintain TOT and give it a good experience uh, than maintaining two resolvers, PIPENV and TOT. So also in the case, if someone says they wanna, they prefer to use Thoth, but there are some specific packages that are a little bit less used that they might want to include in their dependencies. Will that break the resolver? Will that cause it to basically not resolve? Uh, if people want to use dependencies uh, that we do not resolve, like yeah, that's that's not known to thought. Uh, that's a good question. Why they want to use such dependencies, and uh, if we want to ingest data for these dependencies, and we want to provide guidance, like yep. that resolver can provide guidance. No, but that might be a, a larger question in itself, right? Uh, because it might be a company proprietary secret packages that we don't want to share with the public world. Uh, and as I said, it might be a larger question because we should have a conclusion on what is Toth reaction on these packages. I mean, we can't ingest them, obviously, because they are company proprietary. Uh, we cannot even access them because they are hosted on a company internal um, index. So how do we handle about uh, these category of packages? We can ingest dependency data. So even if we don't have yes. uh, information about packages, we can analyze uh, on premise dependency data yes. or extract dependency data. I think for the time being, I would go ahead with a um, Toth only solution. So it's a little bit dangerous um, as we cannot fall back to pipenv in that case. Um, but I, I see the value of it in having a stronger TOTH focus. Uh, the JupyterLab requirements extension is using TOTH to resolve package dependencies, maintain them in the Jupyter notebook file itself by embedding them in the metadata. Sounds, sounds like okay to me. I mean, could, could work also better with the Highlander <laughs> because as, as they use a subset of maintain packages might be better, maybe. Is that good, uh, Gage, or is that exactly the opposite of what you think? Um, I, I Yeah, I think I got an answer. I, I'm, the only concern is the, because I mean, yeah, like I said before, the uh, there's still an option to have pipenv, and if there's an option to pipenv, then that means we're alienating a lot of packages. 
but I mean, the second if we remove the option to use pipm, then it makes it a little bit more obvious. Like, okay, any package I add that has auto completion and, and is recognized should work. Whereas the other way around, it's like it's kind of an unknown territory. We don't know if it'll work or not. I guess maybe the concern, if I understood correctly, Gage, the concern, which I think it's like, it's like, is is restricting the resolution to toss uh, a higher? Uh, uh, does it mean it's a higher barrier to entry for like a general general public, like someone that comes thinking that now? the beyond use case right i bring i bring my own notebook um and that i i come brand new with a completely different background i i open my notebook and install this extension i try to resolve what happens and you know in in the most generic use case i'm i don't know i'm i'm speculating i don't i don't know if we have data how how much coverage do we have to the generic use case let's say and does, does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Like you could bring in your own notebook and it probably works fine on your own system using PIPM and you would expect it to work using this new uh, this, uh, dependency manager. Like, okay, I'll just use this. This seems helpful. But it all of a sudden fails and they say, oh, these packages don't exist. And they probably just don't exist to Thoth or they probably, because. Yeah. I don't think the endpoint really says if it doesn't exist or if it just doesn't exist at all. And that might be the thing here, right? Uh, because we have mechanisms in place to learn stuff that we don't know about right now. And uh, that is exactly what we should tell to the user. I think on the Tamos uh, command line interface, we're going to do that, right? Something like come back in a day um, because we don't know about packages. I mean, not, not, not uh, predicting a date uh, or time. Uh, that's, that feature is currently turned off. Uh, like we don't ingest if uh, people uh, ask, unless they uh, they have uh, authenticated requests. So, uh, but uh, in general, that feature is turned off. And uh, from creation point of view, like creating software packages, it might be good to have that feedback uh, with customers. You know, like I'm a customer. And uh, I would like to use Flask, but Todd does not provide Flask. So uh, it's a value for us that customers want to use Flask. So we have we can analyze Flask, and we don't need to analyze the whole ecosystem. We there, there's no point to analyze all, all to I don't know billion uh, Python packages that are out there. We want to analyze only those uh, that uh, are used uh and uh they are reasonable to to recommend you know and uh the fact that they are used we want to have that knowledge so we can eventually uh ingest uh, prescriptions for these packages and and things like that uh that's why we have an issue uh template in support repository where you can say uh analyze this package you know, and in our case, it's just uh, uh, triggering an endpoint on uh, on user a on management API, and then uh, the package is analyzed, and we can we can provide that information to to users. Yeah, I, I think that's a good sort of happy medium where I just you just allow thought um, knowledge, but also have some sort of trigger saying, oh. I know this exists on PyPy, but it doesn't exist in Thoth. So here's a little warning saying it's not going to work, but a link to that uh, that issue template saying that you can request add it, and then that can be fixed in the future. Uh, I think so. I, I think we we already linked that issue. Uh, if you try to resolve some application, uh, sorry, some dependency that does not exist, you get uh, that link in uh, Stack Info. Mm -hmm. Um, Gage, I put your name on it, but obviously all the information is available in different heads. Uh, maybe we should take it as um, uh, for the topic uh, before this. 
um, let's write down what's happening here. So um, if we got a user story, like uh, I want to use the uh, requirements extension on JupyterLab, um, therefore I add a package, but I got an error, like uh, Toth does not know anything about that uh, package. What's next? What 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 do I do now? How can I how can I handle that situation? If you could write that up as yeah the the, the root cause yeah, user story. Um, uh, if we weave in a little bit of the decision that we just took, like we have no alternative to Toth guidance service, and then how to handle that uh, unknown package, uh, referencing that issue that uh, um, um, Predo just pasted, that would make it like a little bit of documentation, a little bit of decision, and uh, would help the users uh, from my point of view. Okay. Could 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 you pull that together, Gage? The user story in this document. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah I, I the I, I link that reference kind of has a little bit of that user story, yeah. but I can uh, copy and sort of flesh it out a little bit more in here. Um. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um. Cool. Any any further comments to the uh, Jupyter Lexus? Jupyter Lab requirements extension. If not, then I think that was our list of things right here, right now, right? Um, yeah, let's uh, think about this one. Um, Hashad, uh, you uh, added it's an action that is correct. Um, somebody gonna take this one? Who brought it up? Yeah, yeah I can. Yes. Um, right. Maybe um, use uh, Dominic's and Pep's brains too. Uh, Dominic yeah, is a user. I was about to say, I, I, I'll take it. I think I, I found a couple of existing issues and assign it to me. And I can, okay. I can ping. I'll, I'll, I'll bother Francesco maybe, but. Um, metrics, um, right, there's some um, hard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Any other topics? Anything on your minds? Anything we should have a chat about? Nice. So, um, for half of the world, thanks. Um, have a nice evening. For the rest of the world, keep on rocking. Um, thanks for all the brains. Uh, oh, it's, 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 at, it's exactly, it's uh, what we're going to call it. Yes, oh. exactly. It's, it's a, uh, we're going to miss the jokes on Friday, right? Um, because uh, we're going to miss the scrum on Friday. Uh, that's bad. but. Anyway, um, it's a recharge day Red Hat is offering to all its employees. Is that a joke, Dominic? Want to make a joke out of it? Uh, oh. It's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks, everyone. See you on Monday. Bye.